Good morning, saints. Good morning. Thank you to this wonderful morning in the glorious name of Jesus. I want to thank Sister Hillary. Uh, last week, as we were about to walk into the church, she gifted us with a bottle of blueberry jam. Of course, I'm on a diet. <laughs> and so, uh, I only have one cheat day a week, and that's Sunday. So, that morning, I had already cheated for breakfast. So, I had to wait a whole week. And today was that glorious day when I popped open that thing and I just went at it. <laughs> and it was wonderful. Thank you so much. Today I want to do what Sister, little Sister Millie did today. She walked up to me and she said to me, um, you see this here? And I looked at it and of course it was a bracelet. And she said, uh, this is a very special bracelet. I said, oh. And um, then she went on to tell me the meaning, the significance of the colors of each one of the beads. So if you turn to your sermon outline today, I come to you this morning from a very special book. And as you can see in your outline, the text is Proverbs 18.10. And it says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. Each one of those phrases is like a bee. And the same way she took her time to point to each one and say this color represents this, it is my goal this morning to take one of the beads and share with you And we try 
try to assess what the Hebrew writers are telling us about this unique name of God. We need to pause and understand that our God has many names. Many, many names. And all of these names were not given to us in the beginning of the Bible. But as the Bible unfolds and as Bible history unfolds, we get a God's name with an addition. We get, again, another episode in the Bible and uh, we get another one of God's name with an addition. The addition is describing something about God's name. If we go to the book of Genesis, and if you look at your outline, because today I want to draw a clear distinction. In the book of Genesis, in the first chapter, if you were to turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God, in the beginning Elohim, In Hebrew, the I am ending at the end of any word indicates that the word is in plural. So the text says, in the beginning, God, and you tend to think that it's just God by himself, but we know that our God is one God, yet manifested, revealed in three different persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So in the beginning, Elohim, and Grace Christian Church's statement of faith says, second article, we believe that God exists in three distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each are fully and equally God. In the beginning, God. What did God do? God said. And when God spoke, Things came into existence. The word Elohim has everything to do with God starting things. For example, in 1875, in the town of St. John's Bill, Elohim showed up and spoke this church into existence. In the beginning, it must be God. If it's not God, the church is not properly founded. In the beginning, God said, and it was. So, in understanding the name Elohim, the best analogy that I can use is using the analogy of a major league pitcher. In fact, not just any major league pitcher, but the starting pitcher. The starting pitcher is a pitcher who starts the ball game. On every major league team, there are at least 12 pitchers. There are five starters and seven relievers. That makes up the pitching staff. But among the five starters, there is one pitcher that stands tall above the rest. He is called the ace. And if you want to start a series, if you want to win a series, you put out your ace as much as you can. Our ace is Elohim. He's the Lord. You want to get anything started? Put God on the mound. Put God in charge. In the beginning, God. In the beginning. And then uh, in verse number 26, if you go with me to Genesis 1.26, it says, and God said, this God whose name appears in the singular, and God said, let us, now wait a minute, why us? If Elohim is, if we read it in English, it looks singular, how is it that now he appears as an us? Well, because, again, as your statement of faith says, God exists what? In three distinct persons. The Trinity was talking to itself. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So again, God or Elohim can be looked at as a starting picture or an ace on a staff. That's Genesis. But then the book of Exodus, from which we looked at last week, we see that in Exodus, God shifts from Elohim to now calling himself Yahweh, giving us the indication that now he's operating in a different role. Now God has gone from starting picture to closer. As I said before, 
1996, they won the World Series. In 1997, they skipped the World Series, but they were back to the World Series in 1998. They won that World Series. In 1999, they won that World Series. And to my dismay, in the year 2000, they won another World Series against my team, the New York Mets. And the reason why the Yankees won all those World Series back to back to back is because they had a phenomenal closer by the name of Mariano Rivera, who today, according to the Baseball Hall of Fame, he has the most saves than any other pitcher in Major League Baseball history. But something happened in 2001 World Series. The Yankees were in trouble. The Arizona Diamondbacks had bases loaded. And so what did they do? They brought in their closer, Mariano Rivera, expecting that he would do what he did in 1998, 1999, and the year 2000. And to everyone's surprise, Mariano got on the mound, but on that day, he was not affected. On that day, the Arizona Diamondbacks bats were alive. Mariano kept throwing balls, kept throwing his pitch, and the Diamondbacks kept hitting them, and they scored, and they won the game, and the World Series was over, and a little unknown franchise that had just started a few years ago defeated the vaunted Yankees. I can assure you, my dear brothers and sisters, that our Lord never blows a save. When you read the Bible from cover to cover, whenever the Lord is on the mountain, whenever the Lord is Yahweh, He shuts down every opponent on every situation. This book records that God has never blown a save. This is why when we read, Proverbs 18.10, it says, And the name of who? The Lord. You see, we have a stopper. We have, a, we have this, this person we can count on. That no matter who shows up, no matter how bad the odds look, no matter how late it is in the game, and how far down we are, if we call on the Lord, if He shows up, and He will, because He always shows up, he saves the day. So back in 1875, the Lord showed up here in St. Johnville as Elohim. But today, at this late hour, 146 years later, Grace Christian Church needs the Lord to go from Elohim to Yahweh. Because... If he does, we shall be saved. America needs the Lord. America's in deep trouble. Look at around, look at everything that's going on around us. The world needs the Lord. And yet the only ones who know about the Lord is the church. What a tragedy. And even church folk don't call on him. And he is their only hope. So, let me just share with you a few scriptures. A few. Turn with me to Exodus. Exodus chapter 6. Exodus 6. In Exodus chapter 6. Verse number 2, it says, Now God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham, I appeared unto Isaac, and I appeared unto Jacob by the name God, O Elohim, El Shaddai. But by the name Yahweh, I 
was not known unto them. Now here's the distinction. The reason why God was not known to them as Yahweh is because God is a closer. God never, Yahweh never shows up at the beginning of a game. He always, God always shows up, Elohim always shows up as the starter. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were the founding fathers. When the nation of Israel was being founded, they needed Elohim. But as the nation grew older, as the nation grew weaker, as the nation was succumbed by evils, now the nation needs the stopper to show up. And so God says to Moses, now I'm appearing as the closer. I'm showing up to win the game. So to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I was not known as Yahweh because it was the beginning of this event, the beginning of this pilgrimage. But now at this late stage, I am now showing up so that I can put a stop to Egypt, so that I can put Pharaoh in his place, that I may bring my people out of Egypt and bring them into the promised land to fulfill my covenant promises, which I made to whom? Their founding fathers. So, the name or the resume of the stop. The name, the resume of the closer is what for us? It's a guarantee. A guarantee. Here are three scriptures that I'm going to leave you with today. Philippians 1, verse 6. Philippians 1, verse 6. Because this will speak to you individually. Philippians 1, 6. Perhaps you think that God has forgotten you. Perhaps you think that the Lord has bypassed you. Look what the Bible says in Philippians 1.6. Paul says, I am confident of this very thing. No one can persuade me otherwise that he which began the good work in you, who is who? Elohim. How did Elohim start the good work in you? Well, aren't you born again? Aren't you born from above? Aren't you born of the Spirit? That was Elohim. He that began the good work in you will do what? Will take it, will perform it, will carry it till the very end. That's Yahweh. The same God, but acting in two different roles. He starts you off in life. He gives you a wonderful life. He blesses you in life. You're, you're young and you're, and, and you're so vibrant and you're so full of dreams and your life takes off and God blesses it. But then as you get to my age, you start going a little downhill. And then you start losing things. And as you see that life is slipping away, and how can I prevent this? How can I stop this? Well, the game is no over. Now you need to call on God. But now you need to call on Him as what? The closer. He that began the good work in you will complete it. I am confident of this, Paul says. Now, the title series of our sermon is the name of the Lord, the singular and sole refuge for the righteous in the day of trouble. Singular means exclusivity. The apostles preached in Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other name. That's exclusivity. For there is none other name under heaven. There is no other person or resume under heaven given among men whereby they might be saved. Only in one name, Jesus. And who is Jesus? In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Jesus dwells what? The fullness of God. He's the very God of the very God. There's no other name. That's the name we need to trust in. That's the name we need to
to run to. That's the name we need to lean on. On Jesus and his person. Exclusivity. No other name. We shall be rigid and dogmatic and we will not give an inch to that key point. But now also we have the guarantee. And here's the guarantee in Acts 2.21. And it shall come to pass. It shall be a prophecy fulfilled that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Disappointed? No. Shall be left in the lurch? Absolutely not. Shall be left abandoned? No way. Whosoever called upon the name of the Lord is guaranteed to be saved. Why? Because God, the closer, Yahweh, is just recording one saved after another saved after another saved. He has no blown saves. He's the all-time saved leader. And I would say the Grace Church look to no one other but the Lord. The Lord wants to do great things with this church and every church. The key is, shall we call upon his name? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word. We, think, we give you thanks for the spirit of the Lord who is moving today, who made preaching easy, who made preaching comfortable. Holy Spirit, speak to your people. Encourage your people. Allow them to see you as both starter and closer as both their ace and their savior. For there's no other name. It is only the name of the Lord, which is a strong tower. Lord, we pray for every prayer request presented today. For all of these people who find themselves in harm's way, for all of these people who find as though life is slipping through their hands, who feel as though their time, their demise has come, and we would pray, Lord, that some way, somehow, you would reach them and let them know that the name of the Lord, the person of God, and his resume is their only hope. Bless us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' glorious name, amen.